Welcome back. Let's talk saws today. So today I'm going to share with you some of the specifications on those top five saws that I shared with you on the last episode. Did my homework? Let's go through them together and we'll talk about a few other related matters as it pertains to buying this brand new chainsaw. Hope you'll stick around. I've received a lot of great feedback from you folks. A number of folks asked me why I thought I needed a bigger saw with the forests I have here and the work I do here with my neighbors. The 261 is a great little saw. I love this saw. Very powerful, super lightweight, especially for a guy like me. But I'll try to explain to you why I need a bigger saw. Most of you are already there and many of you have told me for a long time I needed a second saw. There's a number of good reasons why you should have one. But have you ever noticed this? to me a lot. It's not because the saw is not powerful enough. It's because like anything else, it's not a one size fits all. You need the right tool for the job. And although this saw will definitely pretty much power through anything one way or another, you probably shouldn't be in a position where you're bogging down or you're burying the end of that bar into the wood. And you'll see many times, although this has a lot of power, one thing I have noticed is that when you're getting into the big hard stuff or if you've got, you know, some rot in there or it's punky, she'll start to bog down and once she stops in the middle of the wood, it doesn't have the torque to spool up again. You kind of have to rip it out of the wood, clear out those wood chips, spool it up outside and go back into your cut. Like I said, it eventually will get through it. But you probably shouldn't be fighting your chainsaw to get through that wood. Now granted, I don't get a lot of big stuff too often. I don't, it's the truth, but we get enough of it. What you probably haven't noticed is some of the subtleties on the channel. For example, have you ever noticed this? you probably haven't noticed over the years on the videos is that whenever we get into the big stuff have you ever noticed you never or virtually never see me cutting it it's always my neighbor guy or husky bob that's because they've got much more powerful saws that'll go through it and cut it a lot easier than me fighting with the 261 to get through it i got my first big boy saw and i want now a second complementary saw so i can get into that big stuff that I don't have to fight with that's got enough power or torque to get through it. And bar length, a long enough bar to get through some of that big stuff or that bigger stuff that we have out here. I've watched a lot of YouTube videos over the last several months of the winter preparing for this. And I mean a lot. <laughs> I mean, I couldn't put a number on it, but there are a ton of videos out there, especially comparison videos, whether it's Mike Morgan, uh, and so many other channels, Stony Ridge, a whole bunch of them and a whole lot of smaller channels that will do comparisons of different saws against each other, whether they're Huskies or Stills. And I wouldn't say I've watched them all, <laughs> but I bet I come pretty close. I've also watched a number of the different manufacturer videos, the tutorials from Still, Husqvarna, Echo. And one rule of thumb that I've learned from them is that your bar length should always be at least two inches longer than the diameter of wood you're cutting. 
which I didn't know before, but it certainly explains a lot. I know that Ron at the Chainsaw Clinic has told me not to put a 20 inch bar on this 261, although still does offer it as a recommended bar length. He told me that the longer the bar, the less power you have to cut, which makes sense. But what he said with the 261 is he said not to go longer than an 18 inch bar because he said the difference in the drop of power between the 18 and the 20 is significant. It's very noticeable. So I have the 18 inch on it, as you know. And so the reason that I'm going to go with a 24 or 25 inch bar on the new saw is because it's going to give me that extra length I need that I don't currently have. And we're definitely going to go with the light bar, as you guys suggested. So let's take a look at the specs on those five saws. All of the specs here I pulled off of the still in the Husqvarna website. I also threw my 261 in there as well as Guy's 365 Special because I would mentioned to you that I found it to be a heavy saw and I thought at least it could be in there for reference if nothing else. One interesting point I wanted to mention is I noticed Husqvarna does not post their prices on their website which I, I kind of thought was odd because still does and pretty much any other retailer does these days. But um, let's take a look at the saws. The number here under the number of subs that that basically gives you the priority or the ranking that you folks gave me from one to five. So this, the 462 was the number one rated or recommended saw. The 500i, there she is. And then you'll see down here, if you follow my cursor, the third saw was the 400cm. Then the 362cm was in there. And the fifth saw was the 372xp. So looking at them all together, you'll see I've got the weight in there in pounds, the horsepower, kilowatts, uh, for those that reference that way, and displacement both in CC and CI, and a price here down the side. You probably noticed I've already color-coded them because I've been working at this for some time. But at the end of the day, let's take a look first and foremost at the weight and the difference in weight. Your 592 XP, which is the one that Chris from in the wood yard had just purchased, I thought I'd throw that in there at 16 and a half pounds just for the power head. That's going to be way too heavy for me and obviously a huge displacement on that saw so that's kind of yellowed out because i have no interest in looking at it but i did want to put it in for reference if you come down here towards the bottom at the 362 cm it's only a couple of pounds heavier than the 261 but from my perspective the difference in horsepower and displacement is kind of marginal and i've watched a lot of videos on the 362 as well as these other saws over the last few months and i mean a lot of videos and i don't think that for a thousand dollars it's worth a marginal increase in power when the purpose of that second saw is to handle the big stuff so with the remaining saws you can see here very clearly your 462 comes in at 13.2 pounds base versus the 372 xp which is base at 14 and a half and surprisingly the 365 is actually <laughs> specced at a lower weight than the 372 which i found interesting and we'll get to that in a minute the 500i is heavier than the 462 or the 400. It's one of the heavier saws. And although it's got a lot of displacement, and I know power to weight ratio is pretty phenomenal and it's an awesome saw, it's a pretty expensive saw too. And I think from my perspective, it's just too much saw for what I need. The bottom line is when you come down to it from a weight versus displacement, the 462 at 13.2 pounds is less than a half a pound heavier than the 400 but there's a big jump in displacement and in horsepower. Out of the five saws that are on that list, the only one that I have here is I've got the 372 XP, which is my neighbor guy's saw. I also have his 365, which I mentioned to you folks is way too heavy for me. And of course I've got my 261. So I thought we'd do some comparative weight measures just so I could get a feel for what that 400 or that 462 feels like. Let's head over to the scale. Alrighty, Husky Bob's fish scale, <laughs> which he had to use a couple of weeks ago, as you folks saw. We'll turn it on, should be zeroed out and in pounds, and it is. Let's just try it out with the 261 with the bar and chain on. Now the power head alone, according to spec, weighs in at 10.8 pounds. All in, 14.35 pounds. Alrighty, 261, just the power head alone. There is some gas and oil in there, and of course I have the firewood pro sizer on the side, so that might add a little bit of weight. Let's see what she says. 11.7 pounds. So let's give that 365 a try. She's got a 20 inch bar on it and it does have some oil and gas in there. 
There we go. All in, 18.3 pounds. Power head is 14.8. 372 XP, 20 inch bar. A Little bit of gas, a little bit of oil again. Let's see what she weighs. 18.4. <laughs> it's actually heavier than the 365. Funny thing, in my hands it feels lighter, but it weighs the same. Just the power head. 15.3. Jeez. I've got one of these 20 inch standard bars. I just wanted to weigh it since we're here, just to see what it does weigh. Let's zero that out. There we go. Yeah, 2.3 pounds just for the bar alone. So that was a little surprising, I have to be honest. I was pretty shocked because between the 365, the Husky, and the 372 XP, the 372 XP, although it's actually a heavier saw, feels lighter in my hand. And I don't know if maybe that has something to do with it's perhaps a more balanced saw. And, you know, the 365 and the 372 both came in at, you know, 18.3, 18.4 pounds, which I'm, <laughs> I'm sure Husky Bob's hoping he catches a fish that big today because he's out there on the ice as we speak. I've watched a lot of videos that compare the 400 versus the 462 still. And you can find in most videos, notwithstanding times when somebody may be forcing or pushing the saw through, the 400 will bog down from time to time in bigger wood. The 462 just powers through every time. And I think that difference in displacement and power definitely comes out in those comparison videos. So hands down, I'm not too worried about that little bit of extra weight when I know that I've got that much more torque or power in a saw. So hey, I think the decision's made. Definitely gonna be the 462 still. I did look at the Husky, the Echo a little bit, but at the end of the day, pretty much all of my power tools are still. So it just makes sense, I think, to me to stick with the same brand unless there was some big material difference as to why I'd wanna to go to a different brand. I've got a great dealer, been with him a long time, he knows his stuff, and his two recommendations for me were either the 462 or the 400. And after looking at the specs, from the way I look at it, the extra powered versus weight, I think is well worth that little extra money. I've got a saw and another piece of equipment that's gonna last me another 20 or 30 years if I look after it. And this way, I feel pretty confident in this decision and spending the money. I think buying a saw that's just marginally more powerful than the 261 is probably not a wise choice. I need that 70 cc or something close to it so I can safely get through everything in the forest and I'm not gonna be fighting with a saw. And of course, bar length, you gotta have that two to four inches longer than the diameter you're cutting. At least that's what the pros are telling me. And hey, I think I'm covered now. Got a 261 with an 18 inch and I'll have a 462 with a 25 inch bar, light bar. And I think that should cover me off in the forest. Thanks again for all your help. I really appreciate the comments, the advice all along. Have a wonderful week with your families. Please be kind to each other. And I'll see you again right here on GP Outdoors. Cheers. Good teacher.